Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. It's been a really nice week. It's mm -hmm. been a beautiful month <laughs> overall, and it's just been a nice holiday season. I feel like we decorated, like I decorated the trees in the house. It feels like months ago at this point. Really? It's weird. I usually feel- But it feel... wasn't that long. You weren't no. like crazy early, were you? I just feel like it's been so relaxed this year. Oh, it's so nice. Uh, and then when I was thinking about doing this recap today, I thought, well, this might be the last recap, but it's not because Sundays- There's one or two more. Yeah, the next two Sundays I thought were Christmas Day and New Year's Day, but it's not. It's ah. Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. So we will probably still have recap videos those days. Um, we might be a little bit hit and miss on our main channel with videos, just depending on how the schedule goes. We're gonna probably you know, give some of our employees days off um, around the holidays, extra days off, and we'll probably take extra days off. So I'm just not sure how that's gonna look or, or play out, um, but yeah. Uh, today's video is sponsored by Hoselink. So if you need a super duper last minute <laughs> a Christmas <laughs> gift, like you won't get it in time for Christmas, but you can do one of those like printed out. <laughs> this is on its way. Wrap a picture. Yeah. They have retractable hoses that are awesome. And we've talked about them so much because they are that awesome. They've got a 50 foot length and an 82 foot length. We use the 82s. Um, they've got them in a couple different colors and they've got a bunch of other different attachments based on how you want to use yours. If you need to go around a building with yours, that sort of thing um anyway we will link them down below thank you hose link for sponsoring today they you probably have, have a sale going on uh, probably um, yeah i'll check if there if there is a sale we'll put like a code here or wherever okay yeah very good let's jump into the videos from this last week first one was planting two holiday centerpieces and finishing the east side pots for winter um, so I just put together a centerpiece for the Hartley table, which ended up being three candles and some Irish moss and some pine cones. And then I made a, uh, it wasn't really a centerpiece, it was just kind of an accent container inside, which had a rosemary, a white cyclamen, three little bitty poinsettias that were kind of a pinky color, and a silver bush. Uh, I thought they were pretty. And then we went to the back of the dirt lands, we harvested some branches back there and put them in the east side pots just to kind of finish them off a little bit and i think they look really nice so joc said have you thought about using spackle and steel wool to get the patina on the saucer or even a flour and water paste you know i haven't thought about that i wonder if the flour and water paste would last you know getting water on it um, and such but this the spackle and steel wool just sounds like a lot of work <laughs> My MO is like, what do I have that's closest to me that might work for this project? And um, in the end, I had to try a couple different colors. I did white, it was too much. Added some black to make a charcoal and that was better. It would just be nice if pot manufacturers would just make the saucers to match their pots. I think that they're missing out. Like, I don't know what the holdup is with that. Maybe there's no money in it. Oh. I would buy a saucer with every single pot I bought. I would buy the saucer. Yeah. If it even if it was a separate purchase and didn't come with the pot. Isn't it? I mean, for indoor pots, isn't it like ultra necessary? Or what are is? they just assuming that people are getting the plastic ones, like the clear oh. ones? Why would they assume that? Like, there's a lot of people who I assume would not want to use plastic ones. They'd want something that matched their yeah, pot. Yeah, sure. It just doesn't make sense to me. Maybe the molds are different, and or, That's flat. I don't know. Like seems a lot easier than the pots themselves. I don't know. There's probably some really good reason that I don't know about. Or is it that uh, people just don't buy them? They could be. Like uh, garden centers or, you know, box stores or whatever. They just we get need, the pot, but they don't get the... We need to start a movement. <laughs> a movement. <laughs> a saucer movement. Maybe you should have your own line. Ooh, that's even better. Yep. Elle said, the Hartley looks so romantic. Do you and Aaron ever have a date night or cocktails out there in the evenings? No. No, but you want to know something? Aaron just planned a weekend away for he and I. We went to, it was last weekend. Mm -hmm. We just went away for one night. We stayed in Boise and he reserved like a really nice hotel that had room service because he knows I love breakfast in the morning at the hotel. And we went to the Boise Philharmonic to their holiday concert. Um, it was really nice. We went shopping the day, like the day prior. The hotel had a butler's pantry, which we've never seen before. It's uh -huh. like a separate door that they bring the room service into. And then, uh, so you don't have to interact with anybody in the morning when it's, it leads when it's into early. a cupboard in your yeah. room so it's like a little um like this size of door out in the hallway right next to your main door so they open this little like trap door kind of thing and just like slide the trays into a cupboard essentially in your room which is locked from your side if you want it to be and then you just open the cupboard and take your own trays out and yeah you never have to open the door or see anyone it was so awesome i've never seen that before that's one of the things i I love room service in the morning, but that's one of the reasons, one of the things that I don't love about room service mm -hmm. is like the interaction 
early in the morning yeah. with, with, you know, strangers. Mm-hmm. It's like, ah, just leave me alone. <laughs> just, just drop it at the door. Yeah. It was really nice. My parents actually came over here and stayed the night with the kids. It was a great night. So we do get away to do some things, but like not well, here. Well, we're just home all the time. It's not, you know what I mean? It's like we get to enjoy it all the time. So when we think of do, you know, doing something like a date night, it, you know, we want to get away or something. Yeah, yeah I suppose. We've got to romance the ordinary though, Erin. We're missing we out on a major do. opportunity. I feel like we do though. All the time. Just not, we don't call it like a date night or anything. Sure. Uh, Victoria said, lovely arrangement. Thank you. Can you give a generalized answer for how much it's safe to manipulate a root ball, both for in this type of project or when planting out in the ground? Is there a rule of thumb? Well, you know, based on what the growers, what I've learned from growers is it's actually not all or as necessary, not all that necessary. It is necessary if they're very pot bound, but I, I don't think it's as necessary as we think for a lot of things. And you can tell the difference between a pot bound plant and one that's not. Pot bound plant, you take it, or a root bound, you take it out of the pot and it's just all roots. You see no soil at all. You gotta break up that root memory, otherwise it'll keep wanting to grow in that same sort of form. Um, so you've gotta rough that one up quite a lot. Uh, if you can still see soil and it still looks fluffy, there's not a lot you need to do to manipulate that root. I kind of do out of habit a yeah, little bit. Yeah, you know, like my only experience with um you know, in terms of like trees, Mm -hmm. uh, when we've planted trees and have broken the root ball, it feels like it's like a 75% chance that that tree's going to die. That's a little different though. Maybe that's like cracking it right through the center. Yeah. When you're roughing the root ball, you're kind of just doing the sides and underneath a little bit. But she's asking like, how far can you go? Yeah. Don't take it as far as cracking the, yeah. It's like, don't go all the way. Right. It depends, though, too, on what you're planting. I mean, succulents, you could take the whole top off and leave no roots, and it'll sprout new ones right? Uh, and keep growing. So it kind of depends on the Maybe it's just dependent plant. on the variety. It could be, yeah. But I think as a general rule, anything that's b and bead, you know, big, big root balls, you kind of want to keep those locked down. Is it because when you break them, they can tend to dry out? Uh, it could, could just, there's so much weight down there and whatever their planting medium is. It could just rip the roots right off of the hmm. plant, I'm guessing. Yeah. And if you rip too many like main roots, sure, that could be detrimental. Tina said, do you have to refresh the gravel in the greenhouse due to dirt and water? We never have. Refresh the ga- gravel? Like put new gravel in and, you know. Oh, just, the gravel around the greenhouse. In the greenhouse. What gravel do we have in the greenhouse? And that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one's full of gravel. That's the original gravel. Uh, I think it's it's better because we have landscape fabric underneath it in term it's better in terms of maintenance uh, because you don't have weeds growing up and there's no dirt from underneath making its way up it's only dirt that's coming from me and projects i'm doing so when i recently took after that water lily root ball i made quite a little pile of mud and i went through and kind of scraped some of it out whatever i could get off in chunks without rocks and then i just took a metal tooth rake and just broke it up and spread it out you can, can't even tell that I did anything in there. So you just kind of go through and maintain it with a, a rake every once in a while, and it just kind of moves gravel around and yeah. makes it look a little bit more fresh. Althea Jackson said, are you hosting Christmas at your home? I don't think so. It's going to be an interesting Christmas. I'm excited for it. I, I'm just excited that we're trying new things. Like, I don't know, like kind of changing up tradition a little bit sure. and kind of like going with the flow a little bit more. So Aaron's mom is doing a new tradition on Christmas Eve where that's when that side of the family is gonna all get together and we are exchanging stockings. So we've already drawn names uh, and we're filling up the stocking of the person that we drew their name. I do not approve. <laughs> Aaron does not, I don't, I don't think you're alone. I think it, it's just like a trial year. Sure, okay. We'll see how it goes. Um, and so that's when we'll be with Aaron's family. And then the next day, we're gonna be at our own house with our kids, like just our family, like our little family unit until way later in the day, which is abnormal for us because usually Aaron and I and the kids and prior to that, it was just you and I, we'd bounce all over the place. Yeah. Like we'd have our Christmas at six. We'd be at his parents or mine at eight. And then we would switch every other year. And then we would go to the next one at like noon. And then we'd go back to the other ones. I mean, it was just all over the land all day. And that actually felt festive. It didn't mm-hmm. feel like I wouldn't mind. Well, it wasn't doing a lot again. of driving, so it wasn't too big a deal. Right. It was just, change it was nice. Scenery. Yeah. Change, change it up through the day. But uh, we are having Christmas Day at my parents' house where in their renovation that will not be done. In fact, they just found out today that their floors won't even be in, which they thought they were going to go in like this week. 
So, which is kind of good because then we can do our whole thing. I mean, they are planning on renting tables and setting up the upstairs, even though it's gonna still be unfinished and we are making food on the grill downstairs. <laughs> I didn't invite my parents to come over at any point in the morning or they could stay the night at our house and enjoy Christmas morning with our kids. And so I don't know, it's just kind of all up in the air. It'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And I think we're ready. I don't know if your list is complete, but mine yeah, is. I, I think, think I'm more or less done. Yeah. I gotta get one thing for my grandparents. We tried to go today and they were closed. So that's my last thing. Uh, Thena Cook said, I love the arrangements. I love the ideas you give us. Thank you. I'm glad you do. I'm done this year, but have great ideas to add for next year. Is that a certain type of rosemary to grow like a topiary? Mine grows so much looser than that. I think it's just been trained. There are a lot of different varieties of rosemary. Some will grow like a trailing irene, I think is what it's called, will grow more as a trailer and it would be very hard to form it into a topiary. Um, and there's a lot of different upright types and some are more open than uh, others. So, I mean, it's just kind of researching the variety, I guess, seeing what its natural growth habit is, but most rosemaries you can form into a topiary. And I think the key is starting them when they're young, for sure. Jean said, do you have a camera near the pond? The deer might be coming for the water. Also, deer can jump fences of, um, up to about six feet. So I did mention in this video when we were heading out to the dirt lands, I think, uh, we had some deer wander through our property and they, it looked like they just jumped a fence, came onto our lane, walked down out of our property, I think to the orchard down the street that has a bunch of fruit in it still. And then they made they were, their way back through, jumped the fence again and left. They did it twice and haven't been back since. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they've moved on. It's very rare. Like that's the second time in six years we've seen deer. We saw one one time. Yeah. I remember when we were doing the window Have box. Have we only been here six years? We've been here uh, almost eight years. Oh, eight? Have we well, really? Well, I mean, so we got here in 2016, and oh. it's going to be 2024. So seven. So seven. Yeah. Wasn't too far off. A yeah, little bit. I suppose. <laughs> I remember the first fall we were here too we had a huge flock of turkeys come through remember oh, that yeah that's that was right. fun and we do have a camera that shows the pond i don't think that they... i didn't see any action yeah. by it yeah mary anderson said such pretty centerpieces i love the simplicity and the idea of using natural items found in nature question who selects the background music for your videos ken aaron or laura well you probably did aaron did most of our video editing last week yeah so yeah it's I it's ken or myself or you. Yeah. yeah one of the mm -hmm. two um, I don't select any of the music. There's an occasion where I listen to the music and I'm like, nah, nah, you got to pick something else out. There was something recently. I had like a real twang. Did we leave it in? I don't recall. Most of the time, even if I'm like, well, it could be better. I know how hard it is to find the find music, music. So I just leave it. It doesn't matter. It's you know? so much harder to find yeah. appropriate music than you think. It is. Mary Becker said, do you treat your outdoor teak furniture with oil like Monica does? Just nosy. No, we don't. I want mine to get a gray patina and I want them to get it fast. Yeah, I, I was left with the impression that if you want them to turn gray, you should not touch it, mm -hmm. I think. Which is what I want for ours. Yeah. Uh, sandboxes in the greenhouse and flower bed cleanup was the next video. That was such a fun day. So we filled up two little four by four kiddie pools full of playground sand um, and they are in the greenhouse. I think maybe I already said that. They're in the greenhouse and they're full of toys. Like Benjamin has one with his toys. Samantha has one with her toys so they can go out and play. And I think they've already got more mileage out of those than they ever did out of the grass, which I thought might be the case. The grass is fun, like walking around on it and having it to look at, but there's not like, you don't play with it. You know, yeah. you just sit on it. So, right. I mean, we did bubbles quite a lot out there. We did a picnic here and there, but... Yeah, sandboxes are fun. And the beauty of it, like, yes, we could build a bigger sandbox outside or a bigger play area, but they lose their allure so fast that this is going to be perfect. They can play in those for a few months, and then we can empty them out and move them out. Right. And we can, we don't have to mess with it. We can build them something else that's new and interesting that they can move on to. You know, I just think it's the perfect situation. And then when we were done with that, I went out and I started cleaning up our west side flower bed because it was such a beautiful day. I got a little bit done. Um, so I was just ha very happy with that. And we're just going to continue to do that as we've got some nice pockets of time 
on nice weather days. Linda said, so do you, how do you keep the cats from pooing in spots you don't want them to, AKA your flower beds or greenhouse? Well, I know they use our flower beds because I've seen them do it. Um, they've never used anything in the greenhouse and I have those sandboxes covered. They're covered with two big pieces of foam insulation that we had extra, like the purple foam board. Just pop those over the top. They're lightweight, the kids can pull them off and they keep the cats out, so it works perfect. Mike said, how tall will you let the hedge of arbs grow? Any plans to top them? They only get like 12 to 15. 10 to 15. 10 to 15. I always like, just imagine they'll get bigger. Although, you know what? I've said this before. In full sun, our evergreens typically get taller than whatever the tag says. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree? Sure. Like, um, what's the lace? Uh, black, black lace. Black lace, elderberry? Yeah. Um, they get taller than the tag. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of shrubs for us get taller because we have such intense sun mm -hmm. that that leads to bigger growth. Sure. So probably the 15 foot side of things, hopefully. Yeah. The if end. they got 20, I'd be happy. They won't probably, but yeah, if they, I mean, if they get the 15 side or mm -hmm. 18, I'd be really happy with that. Cause you can still see the top of the roof line of the neighbors, mm -hmm. which we have nice neighbors. I have no but mm -hmm. like you know what's that thing about like fences make fences good. make good neighbor tall fences or yeah make something. good neighbor or something know. like that it's yeah. kind of true that like just separating yourself a little bit mm -hmm. can be helpful sure i don't think we have a plans to ever top them what can happen when you top a tree is there's something chemically that goes on the in hormone. plant yeah uh where it makes them want to whoop like all of a sudden yeah. like they're topped all their growth's going to go out this way and those north poles we planted them specifically in their spots in those two hedges because they only grow three to five feet wide which is all we really have space to let them do so if you top a plant it's going to make it probably get wider than the tag says it's like spartan junipers for example uh we had let's see there was some in the back side of the, the church building I think and they're only supposed to get what like 15 feet tall and six five to six feet wide those were massive yeah if a leader gets cut uh, trimmed out like if you have somebody trimming them that doesn't really like is not really looking at the structure of the tree and accidentally tops it you'll have these massive evergreens that will end up having to come out they end up being not the right size for the space so Anyway, we'll just let them go. Amongst Nature said, have you ever considered limbing up the hydrangea standards? I figured they'd grow into more of a tree form. Well, they are a standard, which is a small tree form. Uh, and I They really I, haven't gotten that big though. No, but I, I mean, I, have you seen me prune one of those things? I mean, their trunk comes up and then like one of them will get, like the one on the end of the west side will get this wide and I trim it back to like this. I don't feel like they've gotten... Do you feel like the trunk has gotten any bigger since you planted it? Oh, I know they do. Oh, really? Like, especially those limelights up in front of our house. Those mm -hmm. have always been pretty good up there. But they I mean, dye the white the... house brown, though. Don't leave the white... They're the brown blooms yeah. on them, which I have, but it doesn't matter because our house is all dyed behind them anywhere, all, all stained. It doesn't come off. We're getting off. it uh, painted this spring, though, yeah. on house the schedule. Yeah, house is going to be... <laughs> it was supposed to be painted this last spring, and it needed it desperately, mm -hmm. so you can imagine how much worse it needs it now. Oh, so I kind of feel like, um, here, I just got done saying that shrubs do well for us or on the high end evergreens. Mm -hmm. I think that there are some shrubs like hydrangeas that maybe need more humidity or, or something. They stay on the lower end of whatever the tag says for us. Mm -hmm. So if a hydrangea says it's going to be like four to six feet tall or whatever, it, you're lucky to get it four feet tall. Um, just based on like, cause we've had some of those limelights now for a number of years, like mm -hmm. s five, six years. And I would have thought they would have gotten bigger by now, but they just haven't. Maybe we need to fertilize them more. Well, we've done, I mean, we that's do quite every possible. Every I hear spring. people talking about fertilizing like three or four times a year and we never do that. No. We should try, I feel like I've said this before, but we should try to get everything on like a rigid schedule where we hit things like every other month. I would be happy to if you would come up with some kind of a backpack that, you, that releases the fertilizer. I tried. I bought one on Amazon. It was $20. Oh. It was a backpack that had a funnel and uh, it, you, there was like a release where it would go through the funnel as you press the release. So, you just so it was kind of like um, like a backpack hose like you see guys yeah. you know, blowing leaves only fertilizer came out of it yeah and i thought that'd be really great because then you can stand up straight with a backpack full, mm -hmm. full of fertilizer and, and get then it go, right to the get right to the, the drip because you got that hose yeah and it was total junk just like is there no work. other like higher uh, i think it's such a specialized thing that like nobody really has 
manufactured one because how many people are going to buy it? <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, I would buy it. Just not that many people are fertilizing. Because fertilizing, especially on a larger scale, it's a lot of work. Well, that's the other thing is once you get on a large scale, you find less and less people that fertilize organically. Because yeah. it's just kind of natural that as you get really big, um, it takes more fertilizer or like a larger amount of fertilizer if you're going to go organic. So... Whereas like concentrates, you know, or liquid form, mm -hmm. that's what most people seem to go to mm -hmm. just cause I think probably just convenience. I just need to focus on soil health and cover crops Yeah, and building up all the soils. Yeah. Flip Flapulous said, can you please show any winterizing you may be doing with your hardy hibiscus? I planted three new ones this year and I'm unsure if they should be cut back or left for the season. They should be left for the season. Now I've done it both ways, but technically they should be left until the early spring, well, early mid late spring. It doesn't matter. They come out of dormancy so late that you're going to think they're dead. Uh, but what can happen is if you cut them too low um, and water enters those old stems, it can freeze the crown of your plant. Um, so even when you cut it back in the spring, you want to leave the stems a little bit longer than you would on other things like perennials. I take down like pretty tight to the ground. Uh, hibiscus, I'll leave like four inches or so. And you can always go in and clean those up later if you want, but it gets shrouded with new growth up top. So I would wait until spring just to be safe. Amy said, do you remove the leaves from your rose bushes in the winter? Um, not necessarily. A lot of ours still have uh, leaves on them, but I do make sure to remove them and clean up around them in the spring. Now in this particular video, when I cut back one of the roses, which I only cut, I cut them back really high. Like I'll go back in in the spring and cut them down quite a lot lower but I noticed like white flies coming out of one of them, just one of them. Hmm. And so I did clean up a little bit of those, not totally uh, because I ran out of time, uh, but it does help reduce the amount of, like if you're harboring over some kind of a bad pest, you know, getting rid of foliage is always a really good idea. So at least, at the very least, when you do your cleanup late winter, early spring, make sure to get all those old leaves pulled off. Connie said the editing, the music, the cleanup, all perfection. What's the average time spent editing one of your videos? Well, I edited that one and I would say I spent maybe like four hours on that one. Mm -hmm. Wasn't too bad. Yeah. Maybe even a little bit less. Mm -hmm. um, those types of videos aren't, aren't super difficult. It was that one that was like, um, oh, the recap the of all of our areas Yeah. or like the overview of all the areas. That one took me, what did I say? Like, I don't know how many hours I felt like I worked on it for like a week straight It was a, yeah. where Ken was editing all the main videos yeah. and I told him I was like, because I, I don't know, Ken could have done it probably, but um, well, I don't know because some of the footage that I was gathering was before he started working here. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, he hasn't lived here like we mm -hmm. did. And so for the first like three or four years that we were here, I was doing all the editing and filming. Mm -hmm. So I knew of footage in my mind that I wanted to use for that video that he just wasn't a part of. So mm -hmm. I thought I could probably do this a lot quicker than he could. Sure, because you could recall when it happened. Uh, yeah, I can recall when I filmed yeah. it or, or whatever. And it would just take him a lot longer to sure. dig up that stuff. And Burquist said, such a fun video this morning watching the kids and grandma play in the new sandboxes. My mom did stop by. Mm -hmm. Can't remember what she was doing, but she stopped by and got in on the sand play there for a little while. Whitefly, yikes. Will you be spraying all the roses in that area for whitefly now? And if so, what would you use? We'll, we will reassess in the spring, see how they look. Sometimes if we have a cold snap or something, they might be gone by the time spring rolls around. And we're trying so hard not to do any spraying around here. So we'll just have to kind of play that one by ear. If I was going to spray it, I would probably start in with an insecticidal soap first. And then there's an, a Rose RX. There's a, um, it's a Cap'n Jack's product. And I think it's a cold press neem oil base. I would probably go to that one next. Next video was making a wreath and garland step-by-step -step instructions. It had been a while since I've done like a step-by-step -step instruction yeah. sort of video. And I just wanted to show you guys well, probably again. a year. Well, did I do one last year? Oh, maybe not. I'm not really sure. I can't remember, but it felt like it felt it like it feels like it's okay to do it once a year yeah. to do like a little instructional because sure. it's, it's festive to make wreaths. Yeah. So I just made a simple, like just with three different types of evergreen, no extra stuff wreath for our front door and then a garland for one of our mantles inside. And then uh, that evening, my part of my family came over and we made wreaths and had the, the greenhouse decked out with lights and music. It was so fun. Uh, Carmen said, they both came out beautiful. Question, how long should this last in the house? Do you treat it with anything? I do not. And I see videos of people soaking their greens. 
before they use them or before they go and display them. I've never not one time done that. Hmm. It seems like such a mess. Like how long would you have to wait for it to dry out before you can set it on your surface? Oh, sure. Well, I'd be so worried about that, especially like the mantle I set it on is from 1919. Like I don't really want to be putting... You also haven't been spraying them with like wilt stop. No, recently. I never, I didn't do that for the longest time. Yeah. And then I thought, oh, this is the answer. Cause they do get dry by the end of the season, especially if you're burning wood We did wood fires. have some good results with it. Do you remember? Yeah, we did. It just it does have a it's that pine resin mm -hmm. and it's a very strong pine smell. It smells good. Uh, oh, you don't like it? It's, it's a little strong, oh. so I would you, like using it on outside stuff. Awesome. Using it on inside stuff a little oh, bit yeah. less maybe. Um, so anyway, I mean I will toss them by the end of the year, and not the wreath. The wreath will stay out probably through January, and then that one will go. But the one on the mantle will go out when I do start my clean out of all the Christmas stuff, which usually happens. And I get I get uh, comments about it every year because I start clean up like. Christmas day yeah, night, right. like I am ready for it to be out of the house and I want to clean up and I want a fresh slate for the start of the year. Um, and I know that that goes against a lot of like the, what is it? The 12 days of Christmas oh, don't that's start right. until, we got some, we, you got to leave got, it up till January 6th. We had There's some something. people hassling us about that. Yeah. That's like funny. if you want to leave it out to the six, if you want to leave it out all year round, that is awesome. Do that. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> a day in the garden said, uh, oh, hi, Cheddar. Benjamin has a uh, beautiful, that's the end of the sentence. Benjamin has, a, oh, beautiful heart. I got to read it with the emoji. Question, I got a glimpse of your lovely sun porch when uh, you were hanging the wreath. Do you still use it? I miss seeing it in many, many videos you recorded there in that cheerful space. Uh, you know, we don't use it very often because now we don't have to. <laughs> Usually we used it when it was cold outside, uh, but Aaron would be filming on the outside portion and you would be like all bundled mm -hmm. up sitting there in a chair like, oh, and then I would be on the inside portion with a heater blowing heat at my feet and I was still freezing cold. Um, and then we would use it uh, in the summertime sometimes, but it just, it's not heated or cooled and it's very hard. It was so inefficient. You would throw yeah. a space heater out there and I'd see that thing going and I but was just like. It would keep my, like the immediate area warm, like my toes. It'd yeah. keep my toes warm for like a little bit. Uh, it just, it was nice. I, did, I, did, I need to clarify. I didn't, I was never bothered by you heating yourself. Yeah. I was bothered by you like either heating plants or the cats. I was like, that's so inefficient. Yeah. I did run a little heater in there when I had citrus in there once and then yeah, the cats. It just, just feels like just heat, heating the outside. Basically. Yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> uh, I did pass the chaise lounge on. It's down at the garden center and I think my mom's going to use it as a prop because it was the least comfortable thing to lay or sit on. It looked pretty in pictures and I do miss it for that. It did create this like very picturesque look, but it was like horrible to sit on. So nobody ever did. So nobody ever used it. I did put two small chairs. I ordered them and I was like, who are these chairs for? <laughs> like, these are little kid chairs. They're so little. Um, but you know, we used them for a time in our bedroom, just yeah. like little chairs in the corner and uh, they fit in there really nicely. So anyway, that's what's in there. Yeah. And boy, for a lot of years, we had like the, uh, the front porch, the sun porch era of garden answer. Yeah. I think getting the Hartley to where it's heated and yeah. then this greenhouse is heated and this space is heated. It just, or air conditioned. This space is yeah, air conditioned. It just eliminated kind of our need to use that space yeah. and it was, it was dirty too. We had to clean it a yeah, lot, a lot. And now like I spiders keep, would get in there. Yeah. There's webs constantly. Yeah. And fly specks everywhere. So now we try to keep it buttoned up a lot of the time so that it doesn't become a huge tour to clean. That sounds also negative when it's such a pretty space. Yeah. Like if we ever remodeled, I don't know. I, I feel like we would have to look at that space and decide what to do with it mm -hmm. to make it usable. Part of the house. Yeah. I think well, if we could like yeah. make it part of the house to where you could enter from inside the house right. and maybe not no access from outside, like button it up so that no outside bugs and things kind of get into it. Well, if you just sealed it up. If properly. you had a double door from that front parlor into it though. Oh. Like a, like a solarium kind yeah. of thing. Oh, I wonder if Hartley could uh, make a, like a, what do they call that? Bespoke? A, yeah. A bespoke. I'm sure they could. What, there's a name for when it's connected to a building, I thought, though. Maybe just bespoke. I don't know. I don't know. I think bespoke is custom. Yeah. I right. think you're right. Yeah. Susan Whipple says, the fence has gone behind the greenhouse. Where did it go? Is something in the works? Nothing is in the works. <laughs> okay. Zen Rock Garden says, as the tractor goes back and forth. <laughs> 
For, okay. Anyway, Zen Rock Garden says, what? I did not uh, know you had a brother. When did I miss that? Please tell us about him. I do have an older brother. His name is Joseph, and we are 17 months apart. In fact, we ran with like the same group of friends all through high school, and we both played soccer, so we traveled together a lot. And he and his wife and two kids, they live just a little bit down the road, 25 minutes away, but they're here all the time. Um, like in Ontario, we mm -hmm. do stuff all the time together. Um, we've got a really close family. In fact, I think Joe is better at staying connected yeah. than I am. Um, like he call, calls all the time. Like if he's on his drive home, he'll call just to shoot the breeze and just catch up. Um, and so it's just, it's really, really nice. He I'm, is really likable. Yes, he's like one he of is. those people. Uh, your dad has that trait, but I feel like your brother got a little bit more, like yeah. nobody dislikes your dad no. that I know of or mm -hmm. have talked to ever. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like Joe is even more likable. Like when he talks to people. He's just a little bit more outgoing, maybe. I think. Just like... Uh, first impression my dad can seem a little bit more reserved and I don't think Joe has that as much sure I think Joe's a little bit more yeah um outgoing at the beginning yeah but he is super likable he's got a photographic memory he's super smart uh he has like a double master's he didn't go forward forward to his PhD did he or he yeah, was I think he was going to and then just decided that they it, started having a family and yeah and I think also for what he wanted to accomplish in his life, it wasn't worth the time perhaps, yeah. you know? Yeah. Cause you start to look at the trajectory of your life and you're kind of like, well, it, it doesn't really serve my interests. Yeah. It's like a cool thing that you can tell people. Latin, Greek and ancient and medi medieval history. And he teaches English and some other things, yeah. but, and his wife's a physical therapist. They're both very smart and he's very interesting to talk to. I think like he can talk about anything and he's the type kind of like you, you can debate anybody about anything. And even though you have very, like opinions about things, people don't co go away from you feeling like they've been attacked or oh, yeah. like, I don't know. I feel like you can have a very balanced conversation with somebody, even if you don't agree with them. I think yeah. that's where I'm going. I can or Joe can? You both can. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people still leave liking you. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I was going to say something about, oh, one thing that's uh, really interesting about Joe is like the whole photographic memory thing is nuts. Mm -hmm. Like people who can remember everything, like I'll be like, hey, have you seen this movie? He's like, yeah, I saw it like 15 years ago. And he remember, like I saw it last week. He remembers the movie better than I did watching it last week. I didn't get that. Like Monica <laughs> will say, hey, remember last year when we took a day off work and went to Boise and did this, this, this. I'm like. I have no memory. <laughs> I, I, have, I have no memory of that entire day. Like, yeah. I have no memory. Maybe we just do it too much. You're good at plant names. You um, you rattle off plant <laughs> names pretty well. Well, that's my lane. Yeah, plant, I guess. Plants are kind of my lane, and that's about it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm actually surprised my brother didn't make a wreath that night. He can make wreaths, and he always gets into it. He's made wheat wreaths and multiple wreaths for, their, um, for holidays and Christmas and stuff, so he's interested in that, too, and he does garden as well. So, you know, Monica and Nick have their new remodeled garden space that we were able to work on this year. Heather and Joe, which maybe at some point, we did a patio for them. Mm -hmm. We put in that paver patio and fire pit and got them all that furniture for that area and they put in a raised bed garden um it's different in shape but they did the black picket fence around it and i think i would love to put in a greenhouse for them like a different style than any ones that we have i asked joe about that they and, can't um, really decide on yeah, a spot they weren't sure where they would want it to and i don't know if i'm like are you sure it's gonna be free yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'll give you a free greenhouse we'll put it in we'll do all the work and i'll landscape around it yeah but they're like oh i don't know if i said hot tub they'd make it happen yeah right now uh, anyway, user said, I've got plenty of greens and cones on my property to use. Do you treat the cones in any particular way to ensure that they stay nice from year to year? I do not. I do not bake mine. I know a lot of people put them in the oven to oh, bake, yeah, to bake like, like, spiders spi or... bugs and things, but I don't bake mine. I don't treat mine. I just use them straight from nature. I've never had a problem. Hmm. I mean, every area is different. Never say never. It could happen, but I thankfully haven't. Uh, had a problem. The giddy geranium said, nothing says, says don't touch my Felcos like writing Laura on the handle. <laughs> and that's exactly what it means <laughs> too. Uh, you know, if something happens with my Felcos, I just, there've been so many pair and who knows, it's probably me who's tossed them with the piles or, or whatever, but they get so like gross and, cl and dirty and rusted that I just thought this pair, I'm going to treat really nice. I, for you, I feel like you try to keep different Felcos in different areas. Yeah. It's like, I need one in the cut flower shed. I need one in the greenhouse, one, one in, in the Hartley, here. one mm -hmm. in here. Yeah. And, um, 
They just, need to all say Laura Greenhouse, Laura Studio, yeah. Laura. That yeah. way you're not like walking around everywhere to gather up your supplies. Yeah. I and, only I only have one pair with my name on them, <laughs> though. So that's the problem. Uh, but yeah. Question, how often should you sharpen your Felcos? As often as they need it. I think I'm going to do a maintenance video here soon because I don't think I brought them in here, but I found a pair of Felcos somewhere in the garden and they are so full of rust. I thought this is a perfect opportunity. Maybe we can tear those apart together and fix them. That will probably be coming up here soon yeah. because that's a great project to do right now. Tart Christine said, beautiful wreath and garland. How exciting to have the whole family there for a fun project. Question, did you renovate your fireplace? Or is this a different fireplace? It is a different fireplace in the house. There are two. Um, so there's the great, great big, big one in our great room. And then there's that smaller one that you saw in this one that's in the old side of the house. And I think there was, whoa, that came out loud. <laughs> I think there was one in our basement at one time. There is yeah. a fireplace. It's not functional. Well, there's a, there, yeah, there's a fireplace. And a chimney. Yeah. Uh, but it's all... And then there's another flue that uh, in that same downstairs mm -hmm. that is just like has I don't know what the deal was with it. Yeah. But um, I used it to run like Ethernet lines up to the attic. Oh, that's handy. Yeah. Yeah. Um. That one in the front parlor, <laughs> we're gonna have to have them. We had a fire uh, sweep. Uh, how what do you call? The chimney sweep? Chimney sweep. Yeah. We had a guy come in and inspect our fireplaces just a few weeks ago because we'd never had it done. And it just, just for peace of mind. And ours are looking great. Except for Paul cleaned ours out like two years ago. He got one of those end of the drill like bit things mm -hmm. that you can run down in and it kind of like flips everything and cleans them out. Um, so, I mean, I guess it has been cleaned. Paul cleaned our great room one that way. But when he was cleaning out the front parlor one, there's like a, a bend in yeah, that. Yeah, it's not straight. It's not straight, and that piece broke off. So that piece is in there. So the chimney sweep, the guy that came said he can get it out, but he's going to come when the roof is safe and it's, you know, warm outside. So that one we're going to hold off on fires. Um, and he said, you could, bur you could burn a fire in there, but it's going to smell like fiberglass. <laughs> like, mm. no, thank you. I think we'll just... We'll wait until you can come back and take that out. We didn't burn fires in there hardly ever anyway. Karen said, I have made many wreaths made like you have shown, but never made a garland. Great instructions, and they both turned out beautiful. What do you use to get the pine sap off your Felco pruner? There's uh, cleaners and stuff like that. Again, maybe we can show you in a... You know, the, those uh, greases and sprays, the mm -hmm. Felco ones, um, a lot of you guys have been buying them on the mm -hmm. store. They're like like a way hotter item than I oh. would have thought. It's the season where everybody's wanting to get their stuff all yeah. in order. For Cleaned. The, yeah, and ready for next season. Uh, and my flower girl said, we just moved to a new home and have lots of evergreens, but may need to be, but many need to be replaced. I'd love to plant stuff that I can use to make winter decor. What would be your top choices for trees and shrubs? We've talked about making a video about yeah. that. Things Let's to just plant. do it. Let's make a video for, um, cause we need to get like a list together of all the things that we're gonna plant along the back. Yeah, and of course every area, you might have to adjust it a little bit, because like fir, which I order bulk greens fir, we can't grow fir here, yeah. but we can grow spruce, which is fairly similar. Um, so it might you might have to adjust. Yeah, and if we can grow the right type of pine, where you can, the princess pine, mm -hmm. or whatever it is that you're getting, mm -hmm. like if we can get a, a few different types of pines that you can cut off of every yeah. year, um, I think that'd be great too. That would be great. Okay, uh, next video, repotting my three and a half week old geraniums that are looking excellent and a big beautiful kumquat that had been sitting in its nursery container for almost a year in our greenhouse. Melinda said, do you recall where to get those tongs and could you re-give us the link for those Expando paper seed starting kits? I can't find them and I really want them. Both are from Gardener Supply. Those tongs are made specially for the seeds, the seed trays that I use and then the paper pots are from them as well, which I love. 13 Dulcie said, hearing Benjamin sing brings joy to my ears. He was just, um, yeah, just singing away in the background. Did you hear that, Aaron, in that video? He was just like humming and singing. Yeah, it was really sweet. There's like nothing happier sounding than that. That's like yeah. a, that's a happy child, it sounds like to me, you know. Our kids, their two favorite songs are... Um, the Star Spangled Star Banner. Star Spangled Banner and America the Beautiful. <laughs> like... Um, Benjamin, I don't know wh how it came up, but uh, he watched, what was the winner of uh, America, not America's Got Talent, the one before Jennifer that? Jennifer Hudson. Jennifer Hudson. It was yep. Jennifer Hudson he at a her. Super Bowl singing yeah. that, and he watched that over and over. She's got a great voice, but um, he, like he just fell in love with mm -hmm. that Star Spangled Banner. 
and now he can sing the entire thing. Both of them. Samantha can, too. Yeah. <laughs> she wakes up in her crib and sings it. Yeah. Just by herself. I've got some clips. A couple of patriotic kids. Yeah. <laughs> Nancy Brown said, how warm is your greenhouse? At what temperature would the geraniums be okay? Uh, in our plastic greenhouse where I do have geraniums, it dips down to like 50 mm -hmm. in there. And that's as low as it gets. That's when the heater will kick on. And the way it works is it, it does fluctuate like 15, 20 degrees mm -hmm. to where um, it will heat it up, blow heat like constant until it heats it up. And then it'll let it go all the way back down to 50. And then it'll heat it back up. So there's moments where you're like, oh, it's kind of chilly in here. And then the heater will kick on and make it to where it's like, oh, I need to take my coat yeah. off. I wish it was a little tiny bit more consistent in there. Yeah. But the geraniums are absolutely fine. I think they could go even colder than that. I'm guessing down to 40 would be safe. Uh, Hartley stays at about 65-ish in there, and they seem to do really well. Julie Knapp said, mixing the fertilizer in the soil doesn't cause root burn. Uh, it hasn't for me. I noticed that as a comment when we planted the rose, the bare root roses, when I put the biotone in the holes. I don't think that's the case with espoma. I mean- With organic I'm not telling you that fertilizers. you have to do it. Yeah, but with, yeah. with uh, if you're doing using organic and, and specifically espoma stuff, I don't think you're going to burn the roots. I never have. Yeah. I never have. Our roses did fantastic this year. Like, oh too yeah, they they rocked <laughs> too much. It. Yeah, yeah. To where maybe I should have put like a couple extra feet between the rows. It's the biotone. I'm telling you. <laughs> no, it's well. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> you need to space them out more. <laughs> um, the geranium seedlings and the kumquat both are doing really well, and it's been. It's been about a week or so since yeah. since I potted them up. You know, so, okay, so in contrast, roses are one that fit in like the evergreen category yeah. that oh. do better for uh -huh. us here than, because we don't have like mildew issues with roses. Black spot. We don't have black spot. Some the of occasional the virus. That, yeah, just sure. Dig those out and get rid of them. But like, um, provided they've got water at the root zone, mm -hmm. they get plenty of sun. Yep. And they soak it up. They rock it here. Belinda said, I know you are 100% right about not going up in pot size too much, but my question for anyone is that uh, is true. Why can't you go from any size pot and plant in the ground, which is going up many times the pot size? I don't know. It makes no sense. Why plants shock? It's like they know they're in a bigger container, mm -hmm. but in the ground, you're planting it in like essentially this most giant container it could ever be planted in, right. and it's fine. If you plant it in an infinite container, it's fine. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe we should do some experimenting. Maybe I should get like a 12 inch, 16 inch, 20 inch, 30 inch pot and plant a four inch container. Yeah. And just like a house plant, especially, and see what you happens. You need so much space to run, to experiments, run experiments, experiments like that. I know. But it would be easy one to run in the greenhouse. It stays yeah. warm enough if I got a specific house plant and did that. I'd but. love to build an actual like production greenhouse at some point and actually grow like all of our annuals. Mm. I mean, like we've typically had um, moss greenhouse grow all of like our proven job. winners, mm -hmm. but we could grow stuff from seed. We could grow all of our stuff, um, all of our proven winner stuff. We could get it ordered in as plugs, because mm -hmm. like I think that our order is big enough that you know we could. I mean, that's the thing. Like proven winners just has. I suppose you probably do have to provide a uh, license, which we could get from your parents. Mm -hmm. Oh. We could just grow some stuff for, for Andrews and then be under their wing for VN Garden Center. Thought of growing stuff, just kind of like... It'd be something to do in to the do time it. of year where there's not a lot going on, though. I grow a lot of seedlings. Well, that's what I mean. If we had like a production greenhouse, you could grow all your seedlings and all your proven winter stuff. And you'd have the space to do it. Yeah, maybe. No? I feel like we're already busy enough. It's another, an extra layer. I suppose. I don't know. I guess if you had the right space set up for it. Yeah. It'd be especially nice if you could underneath water everything. Just oh. like sub it up and then yeah. let it go. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Uh, Jay Talia said, Benjamin is such a joy. What is your sink made of and are you happy with it? I was considering an enameled cast iron one, but was concerned about it showing scratches. Mine is a white granite sink. So far, so good. Super happy with it. Have I had all kinds of stuff in it. Have even set terracotta pots down in there and let the ring kind of happen and it comes right off with a magic eraser. So, so far, so good. I don't have extensive experience because we don't use the sink every single day, but I think it's pretty for sure. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, Pam said, can you link the product you use for fungus gnats or the video? Um, I talked about it when we started the Lysianthus seedlings. It's called Natural, uh, and you can get it in big old, big old amounts. That, oh, it's so expensive. But I think that I wonder if that's something that we could find in smaller amounts to have on the store. That would be so helpful. I, I can't remember. Was it Gardener's Workshop maybe where you could get it in little, like, little bags? Mm-hmm for a lot less. The, I bought the big one because this is what we do, you know, for a living. So I'll probably be using it in gardening for a lot more years. So I can just keep using right. off of that one. So it seemed like a... Buying it in bulk. Yeah, buying it in bulk seemed like it made sense for us. But for, I would guess, like a lot of home gardeners, that would not make sense. You yeah. have this massive tub sitting around too, which takes I'll, up a lot of space. I'll do a little research. Maybe myself or Ken, we'll figure out if we can get it in smaller quantities and have it on the store. That would be really nice. Okay, Victoria said you were talking about how it's in ideal conditions it could get to full size. When planting it in a container, will plants never get to their full size? It depends on if you're super diligent with nutrients, if you're super diligent about bumping them up in size. Some just will not get to their full size if they're restricted in root growth. You know, if you were planting a semi-dwarf fruit tree that would grow 15 to 20 feet or so out in the landscape, I would say you'd have a hard time getting that to full size in a container. You know, you could keep it as like a lollipop or like an espaliered sort of situation, but it's gonna stay smaller because it just doesn't have the room. Um, kumquats naturally stay a little smaller than that. So, I mean, hypothetically, if you could get yourself, which they exist, a great big pot, you could get it up to fairly good size, I think. Okay, last video was a tour of the new load at the garden center and picking out and planting up some uh, houseplant hostess gifts. gifts. Um, so they had received a new load of stuff and my mom and sister both said, you gotta come see this stuff. It's so pretty and I, it was perfect because I needed to pick out some things to pot up because we've got some events to go to that I wanted to have a hostess gift. And I always love being down there and showing you guys stuff, so. That's what we did. Leanne said, you mentioned using a coffee filter to block the pothole. I've always done that, but in other videos, you've said not to block the hole with anything, not anything that doesn't drain. Is it safe to use coffee filters? Yes. And if not always safe, in what situation is it okay to use them? I think it's safe to use in any situation. I mean, a coffee filter is going to allow water to escape. Landscape fabric works the same way. You could use an old dish rag. I've done that lots of times in those black iron urns that I have. The drain hole the drain hole i'm not kidding you is this big wow i think it's just rusted out so i just put like a old kitchen dish dish towel in there and then put my soil in it's come almost like using a cocoa fiber liner yeah which you could also use anything that will allow the water through and uh keep in mind the coffee filter or paper towels i've used that like four of them one on top of the other they will break down over time but usually it's by the time by the time they break down the roots have kind of made it and they're kind of holding the soil in anyway the dish rag landscape fabric cocoa fiber will last a a lot longer is chicken wire too thick or too, yeah i mean you could do like open? hardware cloth that's got oh, the yeah. quarter inch there you go that would work but it's still going to allow some to go through so if you did like hardware cloth and then like a paper towel or two paper towels so that that would break down yeah um by that time the soil is probably like yeah bound up Locked enough in. yeah megan said love new house plants as hostess gifts question about the ficus i have a very similar one a ficus benjamin benjamina is that how they say them, or benjamina that is quite large and bushy i'd hope for it to be more tree-like can i just prune off the lower small branches yes is there too much to prune off in one go or can i go for it i mean you can go for it if you want it's a little more risky if you're taking off a tremendous amount i think the rule of thumb i always heard growing up is don't take off more than 20 percent of the tree at one time so maybe in the beginning, kind of go a little bit slower with it and let it recover a bit and then you go after it a little bit more to be safer. Monique said, how do you get an amaryllis stalk to straighten up if it started growing crooked? Just face it toward the light. I mean, I've had, um, I've had amaryllis stalks that are like this. You face them, if you've got a sunny window right, he right here, it will eventually pick itself back up like that. It's strong light is what they need. Uh, Jan said, so many beautiful things, but I honestly can't get my mind off those balancing flamingos. How can I get my hands on one, preferably two of them? Uh, can I call Andrews to order them? Yes, you can, and I think you guys have. In fact, they're out of a lot of the things I showed already. Um, but you guys are just so sweet and supportive, and they love helping you. If they do try to put some things on their website, their website's just kind of like they'll put a few ornaments on. It's not like a full store. Um, at this point so i think they were planning to put some of that stuff on but i think they're gonna have to make another order mm. 
before they can put more product on on their website but yeah they're more than help uh, happy to help you if you want to call down and ask about whatever product it is that you saw they're really helpful um, at, I think, <laughs> getting that thing to you. Sharon Johnson said, did you pick up any nutcrackers? No, I completely forgot. <laughs> that was one of my goals was to, well, and I did look at them because I did a nutcracker mantle this year and I thought it would be kind of fun. I've got a table right beneath the fireplace. I kind of want to do a little nutcracker thing on there. I looked at them and then I forgot. So I still need to go possibly grab some of those. And a last Question for this week. Stephanie said, what is stamped on the new pots? Have you used Wakefield or used Guy Wolf? I have one Wakefield pot. Um, it's that white one that the Myrtle Topiary mm -hmm. is in. I don't know what's stamped on the side. I think it's just a date. I oh. don't think it's like a brand. It's not either of the two that you've mentioned uh, because these are very affordable pots. In fact, th uh, they've shipped out a lot of these pots and the shipping is actually more than what the pots, pots mm. cost. Um, that's one of the things that's so alluring to me about these is I think they're even possibly cheaper than regular terracotta pots and they're saucers that, you I know. think, um, the pots are like really difficult to ship to individuals because, mm -hmm. well, one, they break, but two, if you ship a bunch to like a garden center, mm -hmm. you can nest them within right. each other. So mm -hmm. you can send, you know, 40 pots in one box because mm -hmm. they're all nested together versus if you're just sending one to somebody, it takes up like. Not the same amount of space, but right. a big box mm -hmm. just for one. And you guys, that is it for today's recap video. One week left till Christmas. It's very you exciting. Get that hose link purchase. Which <laughs> means it's only a couple weeks until the start of the new year, which means we're going to start in on, we're like really getting ready for next year's garden. It'll be fun. Which makes me excited. So, anyway, a uh, reminder about hose link. We'll put the link down below. We'll let you know if there's any sale information that you need to know, but they are awesome hose reels and I stand behind them fully. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this recap video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you have a great week and we will see you in the next one. Bye.